Nighttime Growing Vines again. Yippee! Um, yeah. I'm a bit late with the video. It's kind of calculated. I wanted to take a smooth, relaxing day. So I didn't make the video for the whole day, pushing it off, knowing very well it would end in this. But here we are. Um, the fantasy shop, the fantasy shop, no, fantasy sub genre that I want to talk about is, well, I don't even really know if it has a solid name, but I usually call it uh, cataclysm fantasy or post-cataclysmic fantasy. It is very much the fantasy equivalent of post-apocalyptic sci-fi. This is after the fall of empires, after great war or disaster or something ruined the world, or at least enough of the world that it affects everything around the main characters. Um, so a lot of the things from post-apocalyptic fiction is back here again. The isolation the pocket of, of settlements that each develop their own unique identity, um, the vast wastes between them. But although in fantasy, those wastes tend to be less the classic dead or dying wastelands of post-apocalyptic, which are not, need not be the post-apocalyptic um, element either. Post-apocalyptic can easily take on some other form. Uh, the wastelands can be wild nature or whatever. Whatever. Can be running lava. Whatever. But in uh, cataclysm fantasy or post-cataclysmic fantasy it is usually more wild. The two big ideas are that either magic is more or less dead and and the world is suffering and you've got dying nature or or maybe you have natural nature that has grown feral again uh, with a wilderness beyond the wilderness you usually find in uh, in fantasy or magic has gone rogue and is chaotic and dangerous between settlements. Settlements are basically carving... Uh, either settlements are building something up where everything has been destroyed or they are carving out a sort of safe zone uh, from the chaos that everything has become. And the dark fantasy that I spoke about can easily be found deep within those uh, those wastelands or whatever you want to call them, the betweenlands. Uh, so it's more it's more overgrown than dead usually, but everyone has their their choice. There are uh, post apocalyptic post cataclysmic fantasy stories set in worlds that are the usual deserts of empty wastelands but very often I would say more often than than post-apocalyptic sci-fi it's more overgrowth than uh, undergrowth it's more too alive than dead or dying but the differences do not end there of course there are the differences about magic being there, and magic is usually a bit wilder in post-cataclysmic uh, stories because it's essentially broken or rogue or gotten through or whatever. It's gotten out of control very often, making it both dangerous and hard to use. And in some cases, it's so dangerous that anyone using it will be thrown out or killed or well worse it is fantasy after all 
because nobody wants to be around them when the other shoe drops and they have to face the consequences of dabbling in strange magics. The whole idea of magic safety is usually not that complicated in fantasy. It can be complicated in dark fantasy, but especially post-cataclysmic fantasy can have a whole world of detail put into how magic is tamed and used safely so that the benefits can be harnessed without all the bad parts of it coming back to haunt you. But what really tends to set post-cataclysmic apart from post-apocalyptic is that even far future post-apocalyptic sci-fi tends to have a root in a society that we know or a kind of society that we know or can fairly easily envision that fell apart or was destroyed. In post-cataclysmic fantasy, the society before the cataclysm could very much be anything. A fantasy world, especially the higher types of fantasy, can be very different from ours. And therefore, the old world is not necessarily as simple as finding a working fridge and trying to get a gasoline engine running or trying to get solar cells uh, functional again. The old world can be extremely complicated and weird. And just like in post-apocalyptic sci-fi, those who have survived, especially if the cataclysm was a while ago, may not even know the world, which in post-apocalyptic sci-fi is an interesting gimmick and can add some some bits and pieces to the old world, some interesting mysteries. But in post-cataclysmic fantasy, it means that the old world can be anything. It can be wild and confusing and chaotic, or it can be seemingly boring but turn out to be nothing like what anyone expected, it is impossible to say. Because not only is current society a warped and broken down version of it trying to rebuild, but the old world is to the audience perhaps impossible to even imagine. The old world does not have to be typical fantasy. The old world can have been as bizarre and strange and unique as desired. Which means that far more than in post-apocalyptic fiction, post-cataclysmic fiction can build on the mystery of the old world. In post-apocalyptic fiction, those mysteries are usually details. Who did what? Uh, where are we? How far uh, into the future are we? What is still there? What happened? In post-cataclysmic, it can be what the hell on any shelf. It can be what the hell even existed before the cataclysm. Were there dragons? Were there monsters? Or are those things... Uh, something that arrived with the cataclysm or maybe they were things that went away with the cataclysm who ruled how did magic work how did the world look it can be utterly bizarre and there are barely any restrictions on it so post cataclysmic fiction often deals with discovering temples to old gods or old ritual places or fighting really strange monsters because again it's not restricted by science as science fiction is 
science fiction after all. So it can be anything. We would not expect typical post-apocalyptic fiction to include huge, uh, huge, bizarre monsters. Yes, mutations are a thing, but they are usually at least kept somewhat close to something recognizable. Post-cataclysmic can have anything. So a lot of it is usually looking back, just like in uh, classic fantasy where there were ancient empires that fell, as mentioned in that episode, it's usually a reference to the Roman Empire, Middle Ages being in the middle between Roman Empire and Renaissance. But here it's just cranked up to 11. There could be the most bizarre and incomprehensible remains of empires or anything else existing that are completely baffling to anyone. And it could be perfectly standard. As for what is not the ancient times, settlements are going to be running on a lot of the same principles as settlements in post-apocalyptic fiction. It's going to be about survival. It's going to be about finding trinkets from the old world that can maybe be useful. It's about making sure that the cataclysm does not have any further consequences, at least not bad ones. It's about preventing similar things from happening. It's very much about damage control, just like post-apocalyptic fiction is. But here, again, it's kind of often switched on its head. It's usually more fantasy style, more close to, to classic fantasy settlements than it is going in bizarre directions like post-apocalyptic fiction often does. The post-apocalyptic sci-fi genre is very much a laboratory allowing the author or creator to dabble in how could society rebuild, what strange societies could be rebuilt. But in post-cataclysmic fantasy, it's already expected to be weird, which means that it doesn't usually have to be made even weirder. It can be, but very often it's more the small things that are weird. You expect magic to exist, but do you expect only certain magics to exist in certain places? You expect fantasy creatures and incorporeal beings like spirits or demons to exist, but do you ex expect a demon to be running a functional city of survivors? Because without a functional society at large, maybe demons are no longer taking up the same roles as before, either because there are no big congregations of people to, to possess and abuse, or because now they have a chance to shine in another way. It could be angelic and demonic forces taking over... It could be spirits running everything because they are not affected by some of the cataclysm. Or it could be that these beings are suddenly very dependent on the non-demonic, non-spiritual survivors because magic is crazy and these beings are affected more by it. So it's usually more a small twist or a lot of small twists than it is a huge experiment. Experiments can perfectly well uh, be there. It can be as bizarre as anyone can imagine. But because fantasy is already expected to be bizarre, the bizarre is kind of expected from post-cataclysmic fiction as well. 
Now, as for main storylines and main characters and the like, the post-apocalyptic model still holds fairly true. Um, there are going to be a lot of adventures and quests that deal with rebuilding or helping others to rebuild or to clear away dangers and the like. And again, these dangers can be far more bizarre than they usually are in post-apocalyptic fiction because, hey, crazy magic. You can be chasing down mind-controlling fire-breathing elephants or whatever because, hey, it's magic. But again, a lot of it surrounding survival, a lot of it surrounding the old world, uh, which again here can be more bizarre than the old world usually is in post-apocalyptic fiction. A lot of stuff dealing with whoever is trying to set up a new world, helping those that you support, fighting against those that you do not support. Um, local warlords are just as common a thing in post-cataclysmic fiction as they are in post-apocalyptic. And things that are, have gone out of control and need to be shut down, perhaps things related to the cataclysm, also very possible. Mysteries surrounding the cataclysm or surrounding those who survived a little better than others or surrounding those who are secretly or just successfully rebuilding the world but have something to hide. The usual fantasy concept of wandering between places rather than being tied down to one single place is even more common in post-cataclysmic fiction because, again, smaller settlements likely. But it's not, it doesn't have to be. It can be centered around a single settlement or a few settlements trying to survive together. So there are similarities with fantasy and there are similarities with post-apocalyptic sci-fi, but post-cataclysmic fantasy, when done right, is very much its own thing and opens up a lot of possibility for creative world building with a cataclysm that may still be lurking literally in the shadows.